The nuclear family is the single most important institution in any society. Without it, our very existence would quickly become jeopardized. Yet there are some who are attempting to break down the family and by doing so, their efforts are an attack on humanity. Here are three reasons why the family unit is fundamental to society. Reason number one, the family provides for children. Research conducted by health professionals provides ample evidence demonstrating that a married couple is statistically better equipped when compared to cohabiting couples or single parent families to provide a more favorable home for the development of children. For example, a medical paper by Wendy D. Manning titled Cohabitation and Child Wellbeing stated the following on health. At birth, children born into cohabiting parent families are more likely to have low birth weight than are their counterparts born to married parents and more often experience asthma, obesity and poor health than do children born to married parents. On finance, the median income of cohabiting parent households is about 50% lower than that of married parent households and cohabiting mothers of young children have lower incomes than do married mothers. On behavior, children born to cohabiting parents have more problems with peers, more aggressive behaviors, more internalizing problems and more negative teacher assessments than do children born to married parents. Instability then appears to harm psychosocial well-being. You can review the paper and supporting studies by following the link in the description. But the takeaway is that the primary purpose of a healthy family unit is to provide a home, afford protection and support the general well-being of children. Without the nuclear family, the necessary regeneration of society would ultimately collapse. The home, when carefully balanced with a loving father and mother, is at its most advantageous and it forms the bedrock from which sound-minded children can be raised. Learned values are passed on from one generation to the next. By both example and word, parents must raise their children to know how to live and interact with others. Reason number two, the family benefits a child's education. Professor of Sociology at Princeton University, Sarah McClanahan, herself a single parent for 10 years, was part of the Fragile Families and Child Wellbeing Study, which examined the differences between 5,000 children who had grown up in either a single parent or two parent home. Dr. McClanahan revealed in a BBC article that children who were in what the researchers characterized as a fragile family, where parents were cohabiting or there was a lone parent, were twice as likely not to graduate from high school. The data showed that even a child in a stable single parent household was likely to do worse on some measures than a child of a married couple. In an earlier paper found in volume 56 of the American Sociological Review, of which McClanahan was a co-author, the statistically unfavorable results in education for single parent homes was highlighted as a considerable concern for the government, as education is a key factor in long-term economic success. The paper explains that the primary reason for lower educational attainment in these cases is due to single parent homes suffering from income insecurity. Reason number three, the family provides for the local community and the nation. On both a national and a local community level, governments would do well to support and invest in the nuclear family as statistically it is the most successful institution in which future generations are developed. The beneficial results from well-behaved, well-educated and stable children is not confined within the walls of a home. Society as a whole benefits from children who grow up to be successful and have a greater sense of purpose than their own existence. Canadian author William D. Gairdner probably says it best when he wrote, In the pure financial sense, the family is the original and still unequaled charitable organization of the world. No state could possibly match its contribution to the education, health, or moral training of its members, nor could it supply the young of the world with the equivalent in financial assets transferred from generation to generation. Research confirms that no other institution will care for the well-being of children like a family unit. Good parents must be unequivocally invested in the life of their children. Yet since the days of Plato, philosophers and politicians have been suggesting ways in which the state can raise children in an attempt to subvert the traditional family. In Book 5 of his Republic, Plato wrote the following. Children are to be common, and no parent is to know his own child, nor any child his parent. 
the state-driven preferential ideas of Plato were passed on to French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau and then to Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. As a result, communism, and by default socialism, has probably been the greatest all-time net contributor to the breakdown of the family. Engels was clear in his desire to see traditional roles of husband and wife, as well as parent and child, entirely erased from society. The first condition for the liberation of the wife is to bring the whole female sex back into public industry, and that this in turn demands that the characteristic of the monogamous family as the economic unit of society be abolished. For some reason, the family is being attacked by key elements of society, and in doing so, our Western nations are unraveling. We need to carefully consider the benefits a family provides and choose based on scientific observation, statistical analysis, and biblical wisdom, the best way forward for humanity. Choose life that both you and your descendants may live. For more information, please request our special report on the future of the family. Visit tomorrowsworld.org for more articles, telecasts, and booklets.